topic will have 15 minutes and all other speakers will have approximately 10 minutes. I call Mr Stuart Dixon. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, for the opportunity to bring forward this adjournment debate today. Um, this is a, an issue which has been greatly exercising my constituents in, in my local offices in Carrick, Fergus and in Larne. I would like at this stage in the debate uh, to take this opportunity uh, to thank the Larne Line Passenger Group for their work in holding TransLink to account and seeking to develop and encourage the use of the line for the future. Uh, indeed, uh, the Larne Line Passenger Group's commitment stands in stark contrast from the commitment shown by TransLink and the Regional Development Ministers. Clearly, the Minister does not see it as a priority today by her absence. And with the exception of Mr Beggs, other members from East Antrim. In September, TransLink downgraded its service to the people of East Antrim. There is no other description for it. The new timetable means that trains now run less frequently, service fewer stations, and ultimately makes it downright awkward to use the train in East Antrim, driving commuters back to their cars. These timetable changes were brought in following a so-called consultation exercise, one that was wholly inadequate. In fact, by many, it has been described as nothing short of a farce. I believe Section 75 obligations were not met, as required by the Northern Ireland Act, and no indication of the scale of cuts was given. The surveys were conducted, in my view, were inappropriate and questionable in their methodology. In response to uh, correspondence which I received on the matter, TransLink said that passenger surveys preferred a less frequent service to a complete cut of service. I have to say, Mr Speaker, I find that both an ain and ridiculous point to make. Of course someone would prefer a reduced service to no service at all. But what the people of East Antrim truly need is a good, efficient and frequent service to encourage people to leave the convenience and comfort of their cars and to use our new quality trains. Indeed, I have been informed that passenger figures that TransLink used to justify the cuts may have been taken during a week that included a bank holiday and also one in which schools were off, hardly a representative sample of uh, passengers using the line. Mr Speaker, this only adds to the issue that we have of overcrowding on trains during the morning and evening rush hours. Passengers, including school children and commuters, are forced onto fewer services with less hope of getting a seat on their journey home. All of this in the context of higher fares. In recent weeks, in an attempt to assess the scale of the impact on my constituents of the cuts on the Larne Line, I have been running a survey on my Assembly website. The results make for sobering reading. Of those responding, 71 per cent have said that the changes have impacted on them negatively, making journeys less convenient. Of these, 64 per cent have had to uh, seek alternative means of transport. Unsurprisingly, the chief alternative means is the car. Therefore, we currently have a ludicrous situation where TransLink is pushing more traffic onto the roads, clogging our motorways and our Belfast city centre in the morning and evening rush hour, because ultimately travel by car is, by most people's perception, faster, cheaper and more convenient. It is far from surprising, therefore, that my survey, in my survey only 16 per cent rate the service as good. But a further to this, a massive 75 per cent believe that the service is getting worse. As may be expected, 80 per cent identified frequency as an issue, 45 per cent said it was crowding, and 42 per cent said cost, with others expressing concern about punctuality, station amenities and park and ride. Let us look at some of the peculiarly, particularly illustrative examples of the inconvenience and lack of sense that is seen in the timetable. Firstly, there are early and late trains to Dublin, which residents of East Antrim simply cannot access by train or even bus anymore. In fact, it is now impossible 
for resident Fergus to reach Belfast city centre before 7am via public transport. This is simply unacceptable. Meanwhile, on the opposite side of Belfast Loch, residents in Bangor, a town two miles further from Belfast Central than Carrick Fergus, can reach Belfast Central Station as early as 6.37 a.m. Mr. Speaker, Larn Harbour is unique in its proximity to a passenger ferry port, a potential benefit that Translink appear to have ignored altogether, terminating many of their services in Larn Town and even running a two-hourly service after 7.20 p.m. Indeed, it seems that bit by bit, Translink is starting to try and abandon the Larne line, reducing services to Larne, to Whitehead and even to Carrickfergus. What we need is a sensible approach to connections, rather than salami-sizing services. Translink should be looking for areas of development to encourage greater use of the Larne line and ultimately increasing their revenue. Translink's policy is to cut services to the bone, cram passengers in and push them back into their cars. Mr Speaker, I want to turn to what I believe should be done instead, how I envisage what Translink and DRD need to do to develop the Larne line for the future, to increase passenger numbers, to get people out of their cars and to stop the Larne line from becoming an afterthought. As we will be aware, the York Street Road Junction is due to be upgraded to a free-flowing junction in coming years. This development in road infrastructure will be a one-off in a generation chance to uh, dual track the Dargan Viaduct, which travels from York Gate to Central Station on the Larne Line. Translink and DRD must act now to ensure that future development of the Larne Line for the people of East Antrim. I am informed that if only the roadworks proceed, then the railway line will never be able to proceed. The engineering works must proceed hand in hand. A major opportunity for expanding rail use in the provision of park and ride facilities at commuter stations. Such amenities have produced major benefits at stations such as Green Island, Whitehead, Larne and Carrickfergus. But much more could benefit from the park and ride most notably at rural halts, where the only practical means to reach the station is via your car. Ballycarry is a case in point. This station is the most accessible station to practically all of the Island McGee Peninsula and Ballycarry village. However, it is by and large only accessible by car, but practically impossible to park anywhere near the station. A park and ride would open up an entirely new region for train travel. Furthermore, with the opening of the Gobbins Path as a tourist uh, opportunity, it would provide for a more efficient way to move tourists to the new attraction. Mr Speaker, I appeal to Translink and to the DRD to look at this with a genuine urgency, as they are clearly missing out on opportunity at Ballycarry. I also think that consideration should be given to the reopening of certain halts along the railway line, particularly that at White House in Newton Abbey. The halt at White House closed in the 1960s, but with the construction and expansion of Abbey Centre from the 1980s onwards and the general upuse in rail usage, the stop here is clearly in demand. Previous reasons given for not reopening the halt was the poor quality of rolling stock, which found it very difficult to either start or stop. But with the new trains, that should no longer be a problem. The opening of a halt at White House Abbey Centre would help to reduce congestion in surrounding roads, particularly at peak times such as the busy Christmas shopping period. I have recently had contact with the DRD Minister, when we actually had one, about the possibility of electrification of the line, utilising it for freight to and from Larne. Many may say, why on earth would we electrify the line? But actually, there is a major project in Europe called the 10T project, which is delivering exactly that right across Europe from very many small countries to some of the largest. Such proposals may be far in the future, may not even be economically viable today. But Translink need to have ambition. European initiatives provide financial support to such schemes. But there is no evidence from DRD or Translink of even starting to seek to access such funding. Again and again, we hear that it's just too difficult, too expensive, 
for us to have an integrated ticket or live bus route information systems or buses in Belfast only got that last year, years behind the rest of Europe. We, Mr Speaker, need a bold strategy to develop the Larne Line and Northern Ireland's rail network. DRD needs to fund this accordingly. We know how difficult financial times we are in. Much of massive rail infrastructure is actually sourced in Europe. I think we will all agree that the current use of the car is neither sustainable or desirable. Uh, to conclude, Mr Speaker, on this debate, the timetables that sparked this debate has been a farce from the beginning, and it is time for TransLink to put it right. Instead of slicing the service ever thinner, I would call on TransLink and DRD to restore the previous timetable. The people of East Antrim do not deserve a second-class rail system. We should be developing and investing, not trying to push passengers out. Thank you very much.